Hello everyone, I have done a number of projects with Raspberry Pi in this channel and I got a lot of questions about this device. So in today's video, I'd like to show you how to set up Raspberry Pi as a headless server. At first, you may ask, what is headless server? A headless server is a computer without a monitor, keyboard or mouse. The user will not interact with the computer directly, but instead the user will interact with the server by using another device remotely. The other device could be a computer, cell phone or TV. Here are some use cases of headless server. For example, you can use headless server as a network attached storage device, a media server, home automation hub or VPN server etc. To set up a Raspberry Pi as a headless server, you will need a number of things. At first, you need a Raspberry Pi. I'm going to use Pi 4 as an example in this tutorial. You will also need a micro SD card, a power supply, Ethernet cable, and another computer to set up. If you are planning to use Wi-Fi, then you don't need a cable. But a wired connection is always better. Oftentimes, when you purchase a micro SD card, it will come with an adapter. You can use your computer to write data to the micro SD card with the adapter. If your computer does not have an SD card reader, then you will need a USB adapter for the micro SD card. I will put a link in the description below so you know what it is. Now let's see how can we set up the Raspberry Pi. At first, we need to download the Raspberry Pi imager. So let's go to the website and then download it. You will need to go to the raspberrypi.com slash software. And at the bottom over here, you can see there are several versions of the Raspberry Pi imager. I'm using a Windows computer, so I'm going to download this one for my computer. Now it is finished. We click this one to install the imager. Click yes to allow this program to write data to your computer hard drive. Next, let's click install. Okay, we run this program and then we will start from there. Now it is the time to insert the SD card to your computer. At first, let's choose the device. I have a Raspberry Pi 4, so I will choose this and then choose the OS. Because we are going to set up a Raspberry Pi as a headless server, we choose other and then choose OS Lite 64 bit. I already have my micro SD card inserted into my computer with an adapter, so now we can choose the storage and uh, choose next. Now we have to edit some settings. I'm going to set the host name as pi4.local and we can also set a username and password to log in to the Raspberry Pi remotely. And to use the Wi-Fi, you can enter the Wi-Fi name and the password over here and uh, choose the country where you are. Uh, you can uncheck this and use Ethernet cable if you plan to use a wired connection. Over here, you can also set up a local settings if you want. I'm going to set this up and then we'll continue to the next tab for the services. Over here, we need to enable the SSH so that we can log in with our password. Over here, we leave everything as default and then we save to continue. Choose yes. Choose yes. Now this program will download the Raspberry Pi image and write it to the SD card. We just need to wait a little bit if your internet speed is fast, this will may take a few minutes. If not, it may take a little bit longer. So please be patient over here. The second step here is to verify that the data is complete and correct. Looks like it is finished. We can now remove the micro SD card from the computer and then insert that one into the Raspberry Pi. We have now finished the steps one, two, three, and we are ready to boot up the Raspberry Pi and connect with the SSH. I'm going to use the Windows PowerShell to connect the Raspberry Pi with the SSH. Now let's start the Windows PowerShell. I'm using the Windows Terminal, and then I will start the Windows PowerShell through the Windows Terminal. Here is the interface of Windows PowerShell. After you power up the Raspberry Pi, give it a few minutes and then we can log in with SSH like this. At first is the username which we use Pi here and then add the host name Pi4.local. 
From here, we choose yes. And then we enter the password for the username pi here. Okay, now we are in Raspberry Pi. Let's update the Raspberry Pi with this command. This can take a few minutes, so please be patient. Next, we will upgrade the Raspberry Pi. Okay, now our Raspberry Pi is up to date and we can install the firewall to make our system more secure by using this command. Now let's enable the SSH and enable the firewall. Choose yes. Now our Raspberry Pi is up to date and secure. We can check the version of the Linux on Raspberry Pi with this command. And to power off the Raspberry Pi before you unplug from the power supply, you can use the sudo power off command. So now the Raspberry Pi is going to power off. From here, you can unplug the Raspberry Pi from the power supply. If you want to connect to Raspberry Pi again, you can use the same command, use ssh pi at pi4.local. Okay, that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please leave your questions and suggestions in the comment section below. I will get back to you as soon as possible. See you next time. Bye-bye.